about two miles north of Audborough is Thorpe Ness. The walk is either along the Shingle Beach or along the path, and there is plenty of interest along the way. Standing on the shingle beach here at Oldborough, the sun is coming out more strongly all the time and so the mist is dispersing and it's, it's really very atmospheric just hearing the sea and looking at the, the sculpture behind us. The scallop the work of the Suffolk artist Maggie Hambling, unveiled in 2003 commemorating Benjamin Britten, who regularly took an afternoon stroll along this path. The sculpture, made of stainless steel, is of two giant interlocked broken scallop shells. And why a sculpture on the beach? Maggie Hambling said, an important part of my concept is that at the centre of the sculpture, where the sound of the waves and the winds are focused, a visitor may sit and contemplate the mysterious power of the sea. The whole point is a conversation with the sea. I have to say, when, when we saw it from a distance and it was coming out of the mist, it looked really atmospheric. Coming closer to it, it looked like an old shipwreck and you thought, you, I, wondered, I wondered about it, but coming close to it, I think it's really very impressive and uh, the sun is shining on it now and um, just thinking how it was made and the more you stand here and look at this sculpture the more impressive it gets I think and uh, it's meant to be touched all sculptures are tactile and meant to be climbed on, on as well but it's a bit wet actually for that but I was looking at the joins of and um, thinking how how it was made it's, it's extraordinary and the colours are just coming out more and more as the sun comes out on it and so I, I think I, I'm in the people that like this sculpture. Letters are punched through the vertical shell so that the phrase I hear those voices that will not be drowned is written by the sky. These are words from Benjamin Britten's opera, Peter Grimes. The light here is it's just changing minute by minute it's, and we just saw the geese flying over and then and some went into the distance and others came back and, and now they've gone but every now and again you see something more revealed out of out of the the mistiness it's quite magical poking out through a wild tangle of overgrown bushes are the chimney and roof of a ruined cottage. This is Sluice Cottage. The modern sluice controls the water from what is left of the Hundred River. The Hundred River, now a stream, flowed through an area called the Haven. A haven not for birds, but for galleons and barges and other ships. This is to do with the old Hundred River coming underground and this concrete hatch there, it, it said in the book you can hear strange whooshings and things. And I was thinking, well, I can't hear anything. All of a sudden this enormous loud noise came up from there. And so <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and um, I was looking actually for a rusty padlock. That's, that's no longer here. But the whooshing sounds and gloops and glumps are here all right.
It's amazing to think that back in the 16th century, that little river we saw, the Hundred, that was a, a river coming here into a big bustling port. There were shipyards, Francis, Sir Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind, Hind was built here. And there were forests all around to build the, man, the men of war. That was the 16th century. This was Oldborough's bustling port, with wharves and jetties and shipbuilding yards. However, the Hundred River silted up, and by the end of the 17th century, Oldborough's days as a trading and shipbuilding port were over. This is a real quirky place here. It was built as a, a holiday resort by a, um, a very rich Scottish man who was also friendly with J.M. Barry. And so as some people call it Never Never Land here, especially when you see a crocodile peering around a tree. It's really quite fun. <laughs> Before its creation, the mere was originally the natural outlet for the River Hundred, an area of tidal brackish water. It was dug by hand over the winter of 1912-13 to, to a depth of two and a half feet and covers just over 60 acres. The islands were formed from the sludge and planted with trees and gorse. And J.M. Barry, who as I said was a friend of the Ogilvy family, um, and the mere was partly themed around his story of Peter Pan, with islands and places created such as Wendy's house and the pirate's lair, all especially designed for the enjoyment of children. So we have two very quirky buildings here, both though with the aim of providing water for the village. And um, and this happened with with the windmill and the uh, the house in the clouds right up until 1963 when, when they actually had a, a water supply put in. And and now they're, uh, they're holiday lets, but they are very, very quirky. Aren't they? <laughs> 